Good afternoon and welcome to the updated TMOB Electronic Services webinar. My name is Amy Ramirez. I am a project officer in the Trademarks Opposition Board and I will be hosting the webinar and demonstration today. Here with me today is my colleague, Jonathan Forrest, who will be presenting this webinar in French tomorrow. I have been testing the TMOB e-commerce website since 2018 while working with website developers and programmers to create an innovative, functional, and easy to use website for our clients to submit their requests and documents in opposition and section 45 proceedings. As per the webinar invitation, a link was provided to watch a recording of the webinar titled New and Revised Electronic Services of the Trademarks Opposition Board of 2019. It focused on the general navigation of the website and how to submit a transaction in each, each stage of an opposition or Section 45 proceeding. During today's demonstration, I will give a brief review of the website's general navigation. However, my focus will be to demonstrate the new features and functionality added to the website. Based on your feedback, we have implemented some changes to existing transactions, as well as created new features to ensure that electronic filing of correspondence with the Trademarks Opposition Board is easier. All of this to ensure that documents are received and processed on time. I would like to highlight that any document that must be submitted to the board can be done electronically, so no, no need for paper anymore. Before the pandemic in February of 2020, we were receiving approximately 25% of our correspondence through our e-services website. A year later in February 2021, thanks to all of you, we are now receiving approximately 75% of our correspondence electronically. This significant increase allows us to process correspondence faster while reducing the manual handling and possibility of errors. As per the invitation request, we have received your questions and feedback for what you would like to see today, and I have incorporated those questions into the demonstration. Please note that we have muted all participants. We will keep the chat function available for you to ask technical questions for the first 10 to 15 minutes of the webinar. After the webinar begins, and we are sure everyone can hear and see the demonstration, we will disable the chat. It will not be possible for me to answer questions during the webinar today. However, after the webinar, we encourage you to send your questions to TMOB slash COMC at Canada.ca, where, we'll where we will be grouping questions together and providing answers on our website in a question and answer format, along with a recording of this webinar over the next couple of months. Here's an overview of what I will be demonstrating today. First, I will provide a brief overview of the general navigation and functionality of the TMOB e-commerce website. In part two, I will focus on demonstrating opposition transactions while highlighting the new functionality and changes we have implemented over the last year. In part three, I will demonstrate how to file a section 45 notice and how easy it is to use the general correspondence transaction to submit requests that are not available through an individual files transactions available. Over the last year, we have added the following e-services enhancements to our website. A request for a retroactive extension of time. Electronic service of evidence. A payment option was added to general correspondence which is useful for cross-examination requests with extension of time. Appointment of an agent transaction. Additional file formats for evidence and general correspondence are now being accepted. Over the past few months, Martin Bellibo, the chairperson of the Trademarks Opposition Board, held informal conversations with the agent community and received feedback on TMOB's e-services website. 
In general, the feedback on our e-services was positive and several suggestions for improvements were provided to make filing electronically even easier. I will address some of the key questions and comments received throughout the presentation. We are regularly looking at ways to enhance TMOB's electronic services. We will continue to develop and add enhancements to the website, such as new transactions, the addition of an exhibit and other attachment category in the evidence stages, and other suggestions that we receive from you. This slide lists additional information that can be found on CIPO's website and on TMOB's eServices website for your reference. Before we switch over to the website, I encourage you to write down this email address to ask any questions or provide your feedback after the webinar today. Now let's begin the demonstration. The Trademarks Opposition Board eServices website was developed to be a direct line of communication for TMOB clients and the board. The eServices website allows clients to easily submit requests and correspondence at any stage in an opposition or a Section 45 proceeding directly to our office. This will allow your request to reach TMOB faster. And I would like to highlight that any document that you need to submit to TMOB can be submitted via the eServices website. Please note that this demonstration is being conducted through a testing environment. And while some examples shown today may contain real information, such as the actual name of an agent, this is only for demonstration purposes. In part one, I will begin part of in part one, I will begin today's webinar by giving a brief overview of how to navigate the website. There are two menu options available, the main menu and the left menu. On the main menu, you can access frequently used transactions. It is also here where you will be notified with new features and transactions that have been added to the website. You will notice these blue text boxes throughout the website on different pages and transactions. We have added them to provide you with additional information for the page that you are on. You can access all available transactions from the menu on the left side of your screen. To view a detailed case history of any file currently in an opposition or a Section 45 proceeding, click on Proceedings Case History. Enter the application or the registration number that you wish to view. Confirm and select the trademark and click Continue. General trademark information will be displayed in the list on the top of the page whereas specific opposition cases will be displayed in the table below. Click on the view history icon located under the specific opposition case. A new window will open and display the case specific details, actions and response dates. Now I will demonstrate the transaction history. This feature allows you to access receipts, submitted documents, and a copy of the submitted request for opposition or Section 45 proceedings. Click on Transaction History. Enter the application, registration, or payment confirmation number that you wish to view, or you may simply select a date range to narrow your results.
the transaction history search page is displayed. A list of all transactions are organized in a table, which you can sort by the application number, date, and fee. Under the application column, you can also view the trademark name, the submission, the confirmation number, and the transaction status. When the transaction status says success, this means that your submission was successfully submitted through the eServices site. When the status is canceled, this means that the transaction you tried to submit did not complete. It is possible that you click the cancel button during the payment. When the status is pending, this indicates that the transaction was not successfully submitted to our office. It could be due to a system timeout, maintenance interruptions on the website, or a problem with the payment method. If you see a pending, tra a pending transaction in your transaction history, it is recommended that you resubmit it. Under the documents column, you will see case-specific information that will vary according to your file. If you click on Request Details PDF, a new window will open A new window will open and display a PDF copy of your submitted request. This is exactly what our office receives to review and process your request. If you click on Submitted Documents, a list will be displayed showing any attachments that were submitted with your request. You can download the document by clicking on the arrow on the right side of your screen. You can also access individual receipts for each transaction request or click group receipt for a receipt for all the transactions that were submitted at the same time. Now we will move to part two of the webinar where I will demonstrate opposition transactions. First, I will begin by showing you how to file a first extension of time. Click on opposition proceedings. You can either enter the application number for the file that you wish to submit a first extension of time for, or click on the links above to search the trademark database or the trademark journal. The search results details page is displayed showing the trademark information. Select the trademark from the list and click continue. Any file that is within two months of the advertisement date will have the option to file a statement of opposition or file a first extension of time in the transactions that can be requested drop down menu. Select file a first extension of time and click Confirm and Proceed. The agent page is displayed. If you are a registered agent with SIPO, you can review your information, add a reference number, and the attention to details. Click on Add a New Opponent. On this page, you can enter the opponent's information, including the main, correspondence, and address for service. Under the opponent type, you can select either individual or organization. 
Here's an example of a blue text box that provides information about how to name a joint opponent. You simply enter the opponent's names in the name field, separated by the word and. For example, first opponent and second opponent. Continue by entering the correspondence details and select the language preference. The opponent summary page is displayed where you can review the opponent information and make any necessary edits by clicking on edit or remove. The extension of time, oh, sorry, click next. The extension of time details page is displayed. This is where you will select the type of extension, select the requested deadline, and enter your reasons for the extension. Additionally, you may upload a document if you choose. For the purpose of demonstrating a benchmark first extension, you would select the option, request the first extension of time. Click on the calendar under the requested deadline. You can select up to the maximum benchmark of four months. Enter your reasons for the extension of time in the text box or upload a document. Click next. The review and confirm page is displayed. Here you can review the opponent information, information, agent information, and the extension of time details. Upon review, click on confirm and add to cart. Now I will show you how to file a statement of opposition after an extension of time has already been granted to the opponent and a case has been created with TMOB. Click on Opposition Proceedings. You can either enter the application number of the file that you wish to submit a statement of opposition for, or click on the links above to search the trademark database or the trademark journal. The search results page is displayed showing the trademark information. Select the trademark from the list and click continue. You will see a list of opposition cases in the table identifying the opponent, their available transactions, current deadline, and submitted documents. Please note that if you wish to file a statement of opposition and you haven't requested a first extension of time before, you would access the link from the drop down menu on the search results page. Find your case and click on Statement of Opposition. The agent page is displayed. If you are a registered agent with SIPO, you can review your informa information, add a reference number, and the attention to details. Click Next. The opponent screen is displayed, showing the information that was entered when the case was created. You may review the information and click edit if changes need to be made to the opponent name, type, either individual or organization, or addresses. I would like to add that it was thanks to your feedback that we implemented the ability to edit the opponent information, specifically the opponent type on the eServices website. 
Please note that the opponent information can only be edited until the statement of opposition has been submitted. Once you have verified the information, you can click save. And the opponent review page will be displayed again. Click next. The grounds of opposition page is displayed. It is here where you will select the grounds that support your statement of opposition. Please note that for domestic applications, you can select the grounds of opposition from the drop down menu or upload a document. It is not necessary to do both. For protocol applications, you must use the drop down menu to select your grounds of opposition. You cannot submit your own document. For the purpose of this demonstration, I will demonstrate how you can easily select the grounds of opposition from the drop down menu. If a ground has more than one section, the section details expandable link will provide more information on that specific ground. For example, if you select ground 38 c the applicant is not the person entitled to the registration of the trademark. Because there is more than one section available, you will see them displayed in the section drop down menu. Select section 16 1A. The applicant is not the person entitled to the registration because the trademark applied for was confusing with the trademark previously used or made known in Canada by any other person. Enter the appropriate details in the text box. and click save. You will see that the ground has been added to the list. Repeat this step for each additional ground as your statement of opposition can be based off of multiple grounds. Add ground 38 to D. The trademark is not distinctive. Enter the appropriate details in the text box and click save. The second ground has been added to the list. Click next. The review and confirm page will be displayed. Here's where you will review and edit the opponent, agent, and grounds of opposition details. Once reviewed, click on confirm and add to cart. I will now show you how to request a retroactive extension of time, also referred to as a 47-2. This is a new transaction that was added to our e-services since last year. Today, I will show you how to request a retroactive extension of time to file a counterstatement and submit your counterstatement along with your request. You will always have the option to submit your request for a retroactive extension of time alone or accompany your request for a 47-2 with a correspondence for that stage. Click on Opposition Proceedings. Enter the application number for the file that you wish to submit your retroactive extension of time for. The search results page is displayed showing trademark information. Select the trademark from the list and click continue. You will see a list of opposition cases 
their current, their available transactions and current deadlines. Under transactions available, click on counter statement retroactive extension of time. Please note that the process of requesting a retroactive extension of time is the same for all stages in opposition and section 45 proceedings with the link found in the transactions available menu. However, the links for filing a retroactive first extension of time or a retroactive statement of opposition would be located in the drop down menu on the search results page. <coughs> the agent screen is displayed. If you are a registered agent with CPO, you can review your information, add a reference number, and the attention to details. Click next. The request for retroactive extension of time details page is displayed. Your selection depends on whether you are submitting your counter statement with your request for a retroactive extension of time. If you are submitting your request for a retroactive extension of time alone, select no. The next step would be to fill in the information for the requested deadline, reasons for the retroactive extension of time, and confirming a copy of the extension of time request was sent to the other party. After filling in the information, you can continue until you add the transaction to the cart and pay for the retroactive extension of time request. If you are filing your counter statement along with your request for a retroactive extension of time, select yes. Request your deadline. Enter your reasons for the retroactive extension of time. And upload a document if you choose. Check the box confirming that the supporting documents for the extension of time has been copied to the other party. Click next. I would like to note that we are aware that there is some confusion regarding the statement about sending a copy of your request to the other party. We are currently exploring ways to make this process easier for you. Later in the webinar, I will demonstrate the functionality of the cart and show you a best practice that can be used to send a copy of your request to the other party. The review and confirm page is displayed. Here's where you will review and edit the retroactive extension of time details. Upon review, click next. You will then be rerouted to the counter statement transaction. The agent page is displayed again, where you can add a reference number and a name in the attention field. Click next. The counter statement page is displayed where there are two statement options to choose from. If you select the applicant will file their own counter statement, you will be provided the option to enter your text or upload a document. You will then proceed to the service of counter statement information. If you select the applicant intends to respond to the opposition, the next step would be to fill out the service of counter statement information, including confirming that the counter statement has been served on the other party, the date served and the manner used for service. Click next.
The review and confirm page is displayed. Here you will review and edit the counterstatement information. Once reviewed, click on confirm and add to cart. I will now demonstrate how to easily file your evidence on our eServices website while highlighting the enhancements that we have made to the transaction since last year. The addition of the electronic service of evidence and the expanded file formats were specifically requested from you. During today's demonstration, I will focus on the electronic service of evidence and the expansion of file formats now accepted. For the purpose of the demonstration, I will be showing you how to file the opponent's evidence. Please note that the process is identical for filing the opponent, applicant, opponent reply, or the registered owner's evidence. Click on Opposition Proceedings and enter the application number for which you wish to file evidence. The trademark details page is displayed, showing trademark information. Select the trademark from the list and click continue. You will now see a list of, a list of opposition cases, their available transactions and current deadlines. Under transactions available, click on submit opponent's evidence. Please note that we have received your feedback to expand the acceptable file types available, and we have recently added JPEG, TIFF, PNG, GIF, MP3, and MP4 formats in addition to PDF. It was also requested to increase the file size limit to be greater than 100 megabytes. Currently, the infrastructure of our eServices website cannot support files larger than 100 megabytes. However, if you wish to submit a file larger than 100 megabytes, it is recommended that you split the file into smaller files and follow the naming convention suggested in the practice notice, electronic evidence in an opposition and section 45 proceeding. We are currently exploring ways to increase the file size limit and we will update you with any future changes. The opponent's evidence page is displayed where there are two statement options to choose from. If you select the opponent does not wish to submit evidence, the next step would be to fill in the service of evidence information, including confirming that the statement the opponent does not wish to file has been served on the other party, the date served, and the manner used for service. If you select the opponent wishes to submit evidence, You will be required to upload a document, select your evidence type, and enter the name of the deponent and the sworn date. You may wish to do this for each additional piece of evidence that you wish to submit. Here is an example of how to submit an affidavit split into two smaller files. Although splitting the file into smaller sizes is the preferred method, until the file size limit can be changed on our website and you have a large file that you are unable to split or submit online, it is acceptable to, to submit your evidence on a USB key by mail to our office. 
You will then proceed to fill out the servants service of evidence information. For this example, I will be demonstrating one of the new features that was developed last year to make it easier for you to serve documents to the other party. The purpose of this feature was to make it a one stop shop for submitting and serving documents. Select the date served and select TMOB eServices. Enter the email address to serve the other party. Check, check the box confirming that both parties have agreed to the service of documents through the Trademarks Opposition Board eServices for this proceeding and click Next. The Review and Confirm page is displayed here. You will be able to review and review the evidence details and make any necessary changes if needed. Once reviewed, click on Confirm and Add to Cart. I will now demonstrate how to view the evidence that was served electronically to the other party. The email address used for service would receive an email informing them that they have been served with documents through the Trademarks Opposition Board eServices relating to a specific application number. Click the link in the email. The Trademarks Opposition Board eServices website opens. Click on Opposition Proceedings and enter the application number of reference in the email. The Trademarks Details page is displayed showing trademark information. Select the trademark from the list and click continue. You will now see a list of opposition cases, their available transactions and current deadlines. You will also see a column titled documents. Click on submitted documents. A new window opens displaying all documents that were submitted for the file. Find the document that you were served and click download. Please note that this access is not restricted to only the email recipient. Before we move on, I'd like to address a commonly asked question. How to submit a cover letter with your evidence? Although a cover letter is not required, if you wish to submit one, you can send it separately through the general correspondence transaction. Please note that we are finalizing the addition of a cover letter, exhibit, and other category attachment or attachment category for all evidence submissions. This will allow you to submit a wider variety of documents through the evidence transaction. 
You should see these additions on the website in the coming months. Now I will show you how to easily file a written representation. The process of submitting written representations is the same for both the opponent, applicant, registered owner, and requesting party. Today, I will only be demonstrating the opponent's written representations. Click on Opposition Proceedings. Enter the application number for which you wish to file a written representation for. The trademark details page is displayed showing trademark information. Select the trademark from the list and click continue. You will see a list of opposition cases, their available transactions and current deadlines. Under transactions available, click on submit opponents written representations. Submission of written representations page is displayed where there are two statement options to choose from. If you select the opponent does not wish to submit written representations, the next step would be to fill out the service of written representations information, including confirming that the written representations or a statement that the party does not wish to file written representations has been served on the other party. The date served, and the manner used for service. If you select the opponent wishes to submit written representations, you will be required to upload a document. You will then proceed to the service of written representations information. Check the box confirming that the copy of the written representations was served to the other party. The date served. And the manner used for service. Check the box indicating that the parties have agreed to the service of documents through the Trademarks Opposition Board eServices in respect to this proceeding. Click Next. The Review and Confirm page is displayed. Here's where you will review and edit the information for the written representations. Once reviewed, click on Confirm and Add to Cart. Now I will show you how to request an oral hearing. The process of requesting an oral hearing is the same for both opposition and Section 45 proceedings. Today, I will be demonstrating a hearing request made by the applicant. Click on Opposition Proceedings. Enter the application number for which you wish to request an oral hearing for. The trademark details page is displayed showing trademark information. Select the trademark from the list and click continue. You will see a list of opposition cases, their available transactions and current deadlines. Under Transaction Available, click on Submit Applicant's Hearing Request. The Hearing Request Details page is displayed. Here's where you will select the preferences for your oral hearing. You will select the manner, the language, if you require simultaneous translation, 
and if the request is conditional on the other party requesting a hearing. You will also have the option to indicate if you require a longer duration than two and a half hours. You will then be required to enter more information in the text box. And you can attach any supporting, or supporting documentation. Check the box confirming that a copy of the hearing request has been sent to the other party and click next. The review and confirm page is displayed where you can review and edit the hearing request information. Once reviewed, click on confirm and add to cart. We will now begin part three of the demonstration where I will review section 45 notice and general correspondence. First, I will demonstrate how to request a section 45 notice. Click on section 45 proceedings. You can either enter the application or the registration number for the file that you wish to request a section 45 notice for, or click on the links above to search the trademark database. The trademark details page is displayed showing trademark information. Select the trademark from the list and click continue. Click on confirm and proceed to initiate a new section 45 notice. The agent page is displayed. If you are a registered agent with SIPO, you can review your information, add a reference number, and the attention to details. Click Next. Click on Add a New Requesting Party. This is a screen that will allow you to enter the requesting party's information, including the main, correspondence, and address for service. Under the requesting party type, you can select either individual or organization. Once you have entered the information, you can click save or cancel. The requesting party summary page is displayed where you can review the requesting party's information and make any necessary changes by clicking on edit or remove. Click next. The request to issue a section 45 notice goods and or services page is displayed. Here you will be presented with two options for which for which you may select the section 45 notice to be issued for either all goods and services or only specified goods and services. If you select all goods and services, you are not required to enter any additional information. If you select the notice is with respect to only those specified goods and services listed below, please list them in the text box. Click next. The review and confirm page is displayed where you can review and edit the request to issue a Section 45 notice. Once reviewed, click on Confirm and Add to Cart.
I will now demonstrate the functionality of the general correspondence transaction. It is important to note that the general correspondence transaction should only be used to submit requests on active cases that do not have a transaction available. This may be done for both opposition and section 45 proceedings, and it may be submitted by any party. Since last year, we have added a payment option, which now allows you to submit any transaction and attach a fee if required. We have also expanded the file types that are accepted as attachments to include JPEG, TIFF, PNG, GIF, PDF, MP3, and MP4, up to a maximum of 100 megabytes per file. Examples of documents that you may wish to submit through the general correspondence are, but not limited to, correspondence to a board member, cross-examination order with or without an extension of time request to file evidence, interlocutory ruling, leave request to amend a statement of opposition, leave request to amend a counterstatement, leave request to file additional evidence. For the purpose of this demonstration, I will be showing you how to request an order for cross-examination with an extension of time request to file your evidence. Click on General Correspondence. You can either enter the application or the registration number of the file that you wish to submit a general correspondence for. Click search. The search results details page is displayed. Select the trademark from the list and click continue. The opposition section 45 case results page is displayed. Please select the case for which you wish, wish to submit a general correspondence request for. You can type your request for cross-examination directly into the text box. Or indicate in the text box that you have attached a document requesting an order for cross-examination with a request for extension of time to file evidence. Include $125 in the fee payment box. Check the box confirming that a request has been copied to the other party. And click next. The review and confirm page is displayed. Here you can review your general correspondence submission and make any necessary changes. Upon review, click on confirm and add to cart. I will now demonstrate the functionality of the cart. You may wish to submit and pay for multiple transactions at once. If you have multiple transactions in your cart and you wish to only submit one, you can click on the X icon located under the actions. This will move the transaction back to your work in progress. You can view PDF and HTML copies of your request prior to completing your payment. By clicking on the icons under actions. Click on proceed to payment. and pay using either a credit card or SIPO deposit account. Please note that your deposit account must already be set up and active with SIPO. Earlier, I mentioned that I would show you a best practice to copy the other party with your request. 
Under the document column, click on Application Request Details PDF. A new window will open displaying a PDF version of your request. This is the exact document that TMOB receives when you submit a request through the eServices website. Click on the arrow at the top of right of your screen to download a copy to your computer. You can then send this copy to the other party, notifying them of your request. Please note that if your request was accompanied by an attachment, you must also send it to the other party.